Hi, my name is Simon Murray and today I'm going to be showing you some tips and techniques on how to get the most out of the AutoWear Colors Candy line. Now the AutoWear Color Candies are actually concentrated transparent colors and it's very important to get the correct mix and ratio. I'm going to be spraying some panels here with a 0.8 nozzle. So I'm looking for a ratio of approximately 9 to 1. You can vary that slightly depending on what look you're going for, but the correct mixing ratio is 9 to 1. Obviously that's 9 parts candy to 1 part reducer. And the reducer I'm actually using here is 4011 Flash Reducer. So once I've got this mixed and stared, I'm now ready to put it into my minigun and begin spraying. It's very, very important that the first coat goes on light. I know that's true for all AutoWear colors, but it's particularly important for our candy line. The candies must be spread light, the lightest of all AutoWear colors. So you see I'm using a high air to paint ratio. We're going to look at that in a second. And I'm spraying multiple light passes. It's very important to not let this paint get wet, particularly on the first couple of coats. I'm taking the same paint now and I put a further 20% reduction in and I'm pulling the trigger back further. And you can see immediately, even on the first coat, I'm in big trouble. I'm suffering from what is called pigment migration or paint crawling. This is catastrophic and is virtually unfixable. 4004 transparent base can be added to your paint if you feel you have over thinned it slightly. Obviously it's not going to help me in this situation. But by putting transparent base into the paint, I'm actually giving the paint body, but I am not increasing transparency. I'm just screwing the fluid adjustment valve in on my gun. I'm screwing it right in and then backing it off about three or four turns. This is going to give me a high air to paint ratio and is considerably easier for spraying candies. I'm also setting my gun at about 40 PSI, or if you're in Europe, that's approximately 2.7 bar. The first color I'm laying down is aluminium medium. The aluminium medium is typically the ground coat for all auto air candies. And I'm just coming over the top of this now with candy orange, obviously at a 9 to 1 ratio. And the more coats I put on, the deeper and more brilliant the finish. Be sure to completely cure the paint between coats by using a heat gun and just take your time and just build up multiple light coats. I can't emphasize enough how much you want to keep this paint light. Now the candies, like all the AutoWare line, is a COB system. That's a clear coat over base coat system. So the colors are not truly apparent until you see them in the sunlight. And only in the sunlight will you see the true depth and clarity of these incredibly brilliant colors. I'm just spraying two panels here back to back with base coat sealer dark and over the top of these panels I'm going to spray aluminium medium and I'm just building this up lightly and three coats should reach sealing coat complete coverage in just three coats over the other panel I'm starting to spray metallic gold that's part number four triple three if you do get any little imperfections, any dirt in your base coat, just cure it with the heat gun and you can denib it with a piece of 600 dry sandpaper. But you must always put one more coat of paint on. Just a nice light coat and this will give you metallic orientation. So you can see here I've got two highly reflective base coats. And what I'm going to do now is spray over the top of these with candy apple red. Now you notice on the silver panel, the pan is nearest to you. It's actually taken on a pink hue, which is quite undesirable. Whereas if you look at the gold panel, it's a richer and truer red. The purpose of these two panels is to show this. You don't always have to spray over silver. As I start to reach a ceiling coat, you can see the paint unifies a little bit more. But the panel on the left hand side definitely has a pink hue. And in the sunlight, it's even more enhanced. The panel on the right hand side now is the pink one. It was sprayed over the silver. Whereas the panel on the left was sprayed over the gold and is a truer color. This next panel I've divided into three sections and that's again aluminium medium, metallic white coarse and metallic gold. Over the top of this I'm laying candy sunset. And I'm just building up in light coats. Don't be shy with this paint. I'm just coming in with a tack rag between coats just controlling my overspray. It's very tough paint. You can get very physical with it. I'm just laying down more and more coats and building it up. The purpose of this exercise is to show you that by changing the ground coat we can completely change the look of the candy. 
And you'll notice when I lift this up that the top panel, which is actually the aluminium medium, has quite an undesirable green tinge to it. And yet I was able to keep the yellow more true and more controlled by spraying it over the white and subsequently the gold. It's further enhanced in the sunlight. Next up, I'm spraying two panels here with pearlized black. And over the top of this, I'm going to spray five coats of candy black magenta. We always associate candies with super bright and saturated colors, but this is a completely different look I'm going for here. A very, very understated look, very mature and subtle. You see the panel on the right-hand side has the black magenta. Really, really subtle look here, and a far cry from what we've just painted. For this next panel, I'm just cutting out a very basic graphic and I'm taking a white panel and I'm spraying three coats of metallic white coarse over the top of that. Once I have that dried, only three or four minutes flash off time, I'm coming back in with my graphic and I'm laying it down and over the top of that, I'm going to spray three coats of aluminium medium. And you can see when I take the vinyl off, there's quite a contrast here between foreground and background. And over the top of this, I'm going to spray Candy Bright Blue. That's part number 4607. Just laying down the first coat. And quite strangely, you'll notice that the flames are actually lighter than the background. However, whenever I lift the panel and turn it on its side, you'll notice that the flames become darker than the background. Again, don't be shy with this paint. In between coats, I'm coming in very, very physical. Just coming in with a tack rag, controlling any little bits of dirt or hairs or overspray. And I'm coming in now with my sixth and final coat. Colder colors, colder hues like the blues and purples and violets take slightly less coverage. For the warmer colors like reds and orange and yellows, I need maybe seven or even eight coats. And again, you can see the panel in the sunlight clear coat. It's quite a shocking color, really incredibly bright. And just notice the difference between the flame, how the flame is light now, and yet when I turn it on its side, it becomes darker. It's a pretty cool effect that I think your customers might like. For this panel, I've gone with aluminum medium flames and the background is metallic gold. I'm just laying down five coats of candy black magenta. And again, as with the entire candy line, the true color will not be apparent until it is clear coated and in the sunlight. Another 50-50 panel here with aluminum medium and again metallic white coarse. And I'm just laying down one of my favorite colors which is candy pigment purple, part number 4612. And as I was saying earlier, the colder hues, such as blues and purples, tend to have more coverage than the warmer hues. So I've only used five coats here. And again, in the sunlight, you can see massive depth and clarity. I've spread out two panels here side by side. The one on the left is the aluminium medium that we've been looking at so far, and the one on the right is the aluminium coarse. I'm looking for a really metallic look here, so I'm taking some hot rod sparkle white, and into that I'm gonna put 4011 flash reducer at a ratio of 10%, so that's a mix of nine to one. And I'm just gonna lay one drop coat over the aluminium coarse, and now I'm taking Candy Emerald Green, part number 4609, at a 3 to 1 mixture, and I'm just laying down seven super light coats. And you can see the sheer metallicness of this. In the sunlight, this color is absolutely insane. So reflective, real metallic look. For this next panel, I'm going for the same look, but I'm going to achieve it a slightly different way. Instead of spraying the Hot Rod Sparkle White over the aluminum coarse, I'm actually mixing it, in this case, into Candy Bright Blue. And my mixing ratio here is 50-50, so that's 50% Candy Bright Blue, 50% Hot Rod Sparkle White. Of course, you can use any Hot Rod Sparkle, and I would encourage you to experiment. I reduce this paint as normal with a flash reducer. 
and just lay down multiple light coats and again you can see I've achieved that real crazy metallic candy look the hot rod sparkle white so bright here that the paint actually looks wet for this next panel I'm going to show you something completely different and I'm taking candy pigment old gold and into this I'm mixing 50-50 cosmic sparkle autumn red the Cosmic Sparkles are 4500 range, a little bit more subtle than the Hot Rod Sparkles, but they still pack a punch. So this is a 50-50 mix, and I'm laying this down over the top of aluminium course. You notice I'm just shutting my trigger off every time I change direction, shutting the paint off, and that will eliminate any blotchiness or streakiness in your candies. And again, you can see beautiful depth here, really nice color. Next up is a three-way split with Candy Racing Blue, Cosmic Blue, and instead of using Hot Rod Sparkle White, I'm using Hot Rod Sparkle Purple. I reduce it out and just spread. I always kind of spray my candies over a white panel, a white page, and I'm just looking for any texture or streakiness or blotchiness. And if I'm happy, I begin spraying. Spray gun's just hesitating a little bit, a bit indecisive. So I'm just possibly tip dry on my needle. I'm just back flushing a little bit to remove any fog, any particles on the end of the nozzle and I'm ready to spray. And you know the drill by now. Just keep it nice and light. Loads of air, hardly any paint. Six coats coverage. And you see the blue has got that purple tinge to it. Of course, obviously, that was the Hot Rod Sparkle Purple. I'm going for another threesome. This time, it's Candy Black Cherry, Hot Rod Sparkle Red, and Cosmic Red. Now, I've mixed the Cosmic Red and the Hot Rod Sparkle Red one-to-one. -one. And finally, I put the Candy Black Cherry in. I always mix my colors first before I put the reducer in. And I'm spraying this over aluminum coarse. So it's all three colors evenly mixed over aluminum coarse. This color is absolutely outrageous. You can see in the sunlight, the aluminum coarse is just throwing the light straight back. Very textured, very, very grainy. Real super, super hot color. The last panel we're going to look at, I've just taken aluminum medium. And I've just dabbed it over base coat sealer dark. This is straight out of the bottle. I haven't used any reducer. And over the top of this, I'm going to lay one coat of Hot Rod Sparkle Purple. Then I'm going to take Candy Racing Blue and mix it 50-50 with Cosmic Blue. I'm just going to drop five coats over the top of the aluminium marbleizing. And you can see that the Cosmic Blue has a real nice effect on the Candy Racing Blue. It just throws it from quite a steel blue to a teal blue. And again in the sunlight you can see the Hot Rod Sparkle doing its job. The last thing I want to show you is how to reduce our candies to go through an airbrush. This is a panel that some of my students painted on the last class, just using transparent black and candy racing blue over the top. Whenever you're reducing the auto wear color candies to go through an airbrush, obviously we have to reduce it considerably more than a spray gun. So here I'm doing a 50-50 mix. This is 50% candy pigment and 50% 4011. In fact, I may even have a little bit more reducer in here than pigment. And when this happens, the paint's going to try and misbehave a little bit. It's going to crawl and spider on you a lot and wash out. So what I'm doing is I'm just coming in with 4004 transparent base. Remember we talked about that earlier? And it acts as a binder and it holds the paint together. It means you can work in multiple, multiple super light passes and still control your paint. But given that incredible degree of transparency. Our official mixing ratio is 9 to 1 with a spray gun and 3 to 1 with an airbrush. But of course, that varies quite a bit on the size of area you're working to and your nozzle size. So I would encourage you to experiment. I hope this has helped you and give you some information. And don't forget, for more information and downloadable PDF files, please visit the website www.autowearcolors.com.